This video will provide instructions for dosing, preparing, and administering panhematin for infusion. Panhematin is a hemin for injection indicated for the amelioration of recurrent attacks of acute intermittent porphyria temporally related to the menstrual cycle in susceptible women after initial carbohydrate therapy is known or suspected to be inadequate. Before administering panhematin, consider an appropriate period of carbohydrate loading, that is 400 grams of glucose per day for one to two days. Attacks of porphyria may progress to a point where irreversible neuronal damage has occurred. Panhematin therapy is intended to prevent an attack from reaching the critical stage of neuronal degeneration. Panhematin is not effective in repairing neuronal damage. Panhematin is supplied as a sterile, lyophilized black powder in single-dose dispensing vials containing 350 mg hemin, 240 mg sodium carbonate, and 335 mg sorbitol. When panhematin is reconstituted with sterile water for injection, USP, it contains the equivalent of approximately 336 mg of hematin at a concentration of 7 mg per milliliter. The dosing recommendation for panhematin is 1 to 4 mg per kilogram per day for 3 to 14 days based on clinical signs. In clinical practice, the standard dose is 3 to 4 mg per kilogram per day. The dose of panhematin should be infused via an IV over a period of at least 30 minutes. In more severe cases, the dose may be repeated no earlier than every 12 hours. No more than 6 mg per kilogram of panhematin should be given in any 24-hour period. Physicians should exercise their clinical judgment when determining the appropriate dose. To calculate the amount of reconstituted panhematin the patient should receive, Multiply the prescribed dose in milligrams per kilogram by the patient's weight in kilograms. Then divide by 7 milligrams per milliliter concentration of reconstituted panhematin. Panhematin contains no preservative and it undergoes rapid chemical decomposition and solution. So panhematin should not be reconstituted until immediately before use. Using a septic technique, remove the caps from the sterile water for injection USP bottle and the panhematin vial. Clean both stoppers with alcohol wipes. Note that the vial stopper of panhematin contains natural rubber latex, which may cause allergic reactions. Using the 60 milliliter syringe, withdraw 48 milliliters of sterile water and inject it into the panhematin vial. Immediately afterwards, shake the vial well for two to three minutes to aid dissolution. Reconstituted panhematin is not transparent. The panhematin is now ready for immediate administration. Once panhematin has been reconstituted with sterile water for injection USP, the solution should be administered to the patient immediately. Panhematin contains no preservative and undergoes rapid chemical decomposition in solution. As a first step, it's a good idea to protect the patient's clothing with a towel or pad, as panhematin can stain clothes and skin. Then establish an IV line. To avoid the possibility of phlebitis, you should use a large arm vein or central venous catheter for administration. This demonstration uses a port with a central venous catheter. Connect the primary tubing to a 250 milliliter bag of 0.9% sodium chloride for injection USP and prime. Next, verify blood return and flush the IV to verify patency, then attach the line. Start the sodium chloride infusion at a rate that will keep the vein open. Now you're ready for the immediate infusion of panhematin. After verifying the dose the patient will be receiving, attach a sterile 0.45 micron or smaller filter to the vented IV tubing. Reconstituted panhematin is not transparent, so the filter will catch any undissolved particles. If the IV tubing isn't vented, attach a vented spike adapter and then insert the spike into the evacuated panhematin vial. An infusion pump is recommended to ensure accuracy of dosing and administration time. Prime the IV and filter system with the panhematin. Attach the IV line to the Y site on the primary infusion line and stop the saline infusion. Now open the clamp on the IV tubing and begin the infusion. The prescribed dose of panhematin should be infused over a period of at least 30 minutes. After the full panhematin dose is given, Stop the infusion pump, disconnect the panhematin at the Y site, 
and remove the vial and panhematin tubing. Finally, rinse the vein with 100 milliliters of 0.9% sodium chloride. Remember, panhematin does not contain preservative, so administer reconstituted panhematin immediately and discard any solution remaining after the infusion. Please review the following important usage and safety information about panhematin. Indications and usage. Panhematin is a hemin for injection indicated for the amelioration of recurrent attacks of acute intermittent porphyria temporally related to the menstrual cycle in susceptible women after initial carbohydrate therapy is known or suspected to be inadequate. Limitations of use. Before administering panhematin, consider an appropriate period of carbohydrate loading, that is 400 grams of glucose per day for one to two days. Attacks of porphyria may progress to a point where irreversible neuronal damage has occurred. Panhematin therapy is intended to prevent an attack from reaching the critical stage of neuronal degeneration. Panhematin is not effective in repairing neuronal damage. Important safety information. Do not use in patients with known hypersensitivity to panhematin. Phlebitis is possible. Utilize a large arm vein or a central venous catheter for administration to minimize the risk of phlebitis. Elevated iron and serum ferritin may occur. Monitor iron and serum ferritin in patients receiving multiple administrations of panhematin. Panhematin has transient and mild anticoagulant effect. Avoid concurrent anticoagulant therapy. Reversible renal shutdown has been observed with an excessive hematin dose, 12.2 mg per kilogram in a single infusion. Strictly follow recommended dosage guidelines. Panhematin may carry a risk of transmitting infectious agents, for example viruses and, theoretically, the Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD, agent. Most common adverse reactions in greater than 1% of patients are headache, pyrexia, infusion site reactions, and phlebitis. To report suspected adverse reactions, contact Recordati Rare Diseases, Inc. at 1-888-575-8344 or FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088 or www.fda.gov slash medwatch. Avoid CYP-inducing drugs such as estrogens, barbituric acid derivatives, and steroid metabolites, which induce delta-aminolevulinic acid synthetase 1, ALAS1, through a feedback mechanism. For more information, please see the full prescribing information at www.aiporphyria.com.